It's like, what the heck was I thinking when I started delving into this subject? What, I, <laughs> what I'm talking about today is co-creating with a fractal universe. Everybody fairly aware of what a fractal is? Okay, good. Because I wasn't. I mean, I knew sort of. And I was going to actually put up a really cool video, but I thought, yeah, that wouldn't do. You know, we'd get everybody in a hypnosis thing, and they'd be puking, and, you know, <laughs> wouldn't be good. So I just, <laughs> I wanted to tell you that this, this talk is specific to a portion of a fractal. And that, because the, the enormity of it just is too much to talk, and frankly, I don't understand the whole thing. So, but I do understand this one part, and it just, it just really, something I was very passionate to learn more about. So in 1988, a friend of mine introduced me to um, this concept that I could co-create my, my life with something called the universe. Never heard that before. It was part of this New Age movement, whatever the heck that was. But I hadn't been looking either because, um, you know, I'd had that last unfortunate religious organizi organization experience back in 77, so I just sort of let things go at that point. I also knew I was not a very good follower of other people's rules or ideas. Never have been, probably never will be. And especially when those ideas include threats of things like Oh, you know, eternal damnation, um, throwing babies into hell because their parents for not you, honey, not you, sweetheart, mm. because their parents didn't baptize them. You know, I mean, all this crazy stuff that I didn't, and th and it's not crazy for a lot of people. I don't mean to minimize it. It's just for me, this is where I was then, and that's my whole perspective of this talk. It's just for my, just about me and my perspective. So there was also this idea of this old man sitting up in this throne who had already predetermined what I was supposed to do with my life. Who I was supposed to worship, who I was supposed to hang out with, and none of that, I just didn't see how that was going to work out for me. <laughs> it's just, it was too nebulous, and it was too, actually not even nebulous, it was too specific to something I wasn't comfortable with. Then it seemed at some point most of the mainstream religious leaders tried to rebrand God. You know, from that punitive, hateful, mean God to a benevolent, kind, unconditional, loving Father God with whom I could have a personal relationship with. Until I broke one of his rules, and then again it was the hell and the damnation, which, you know, and then we're back to the same thing. So when I heard about this concept of co-creating, I began to really pay attention because there's something about it resonated with me. And I didn't see or hear anything in the, in the organized religions about, hey, uh, we have this great co-creation program with God. And, uh, or the, I didn't even I have an idea that God was interested at all in co-creating with me. It was more like mandates and you shall and thou shalt and thou shalt not. And um, if I just did what he said, I'd, be, I'd have a happy life. You know, I just didn't get it. So I was still kicking the tires for about 10 years while I watched others. I watched others that were in this New Age movement, and I also listened to a lot of New Age gurus at that time. And I just wanted to see if somehow if there were any loopholes. You know what I mean? That, is there really any loophole here? Are they really going to try and circle me back around into God, this punitive God? So I was a little bit suspicious. I didn't find any loopholes, but I still wasn't convinced. So fast forward to 2017. I'll be really honest with you. When we came here, my intent was not to try to help you develop a closer relationship with God because, frankly, I didn't feel like I was very qualified to do that. And it would not have been very authentic of me, would it? So my intent was actually to just be able to exchange ideas with everybody to find out how can we become better people how can we be better versions of ourselves through our community and through practical spirituality in order to be happy this was my bottom line for years i just wanted to be happy 
I didn't think that was too difficult a task, but it seems that sometimes it is. So I figured if I was becoming happier, then I was moving up this vibrational scale or emotional ladder, as Abraham Hicks calls it. But something inside of me still believed that the happier I got, the life I wanted to create would somehow magically appear. Yeah, it didn't. And, uh, and it kind of felt like I was trying to create, it kind of felt, the more I tried to create something, the harder it became to create. Like I was pushing a two-ton boulder, boulder up a mountain all by myself. So I needed help. And I was ready to look into this co-creation thing. And I understood conceptually about co-creating, like in a community, where you co-create a a program or a club. You co-create with ideas. But I had no idea how this would work on a global scale. Then, a few weeks ago, I started asking some really simple questions. I thought they were simple questions, and I guess they really were. And I started with things like, well, first of all, this went in my journal, because I want to keep track of the questions I was asking. Is life just a never-ending quest for raising our vibration? Is that all there is? The answer came, no. <laughs> then I went a little deeper. I thought, oh, I'm just going to slide in there another question and see if I can't get another answer. Um, is it a hierarchy of them and us? Is it the haves and have-nots? And again, no. I did this over and over with these closed-ended questions until I realized I needed to ask more open-ended questions. That's the only way I was going to get a better answer. And when I did, it was like a floodgate opened. I mean, an absolute eternal floodgate. My question was, where do I fit in with the universe? You know, that's a pretty heady question. I had no idea what the answer was going to be. But I'll tell you, that first answer completely blew my mind, and it put my brain on overload, complete overload. And for a nanosecond, for a nanosecond, I had that awareness and that knowledge of everything in the universe. I, I know many people have done this. You just get that infinitesimal moment that, oh, and then it's gone. And then I, so then I tried to, I immediately tried to go back and expand it, slow down the time of it, because it was like a bazillion years in a big zip file, in a postage stamp size. And so I'm trying to go back to it, to unzip it, to expand it, so I can slow it down and see what I thought I needed to see. It didn't work out so well either. <laughs> but everything made sense with that. There was something inside of me then that I understood. And I'm still trying to process it. That's why I'm really, I'm, I may have a little trouble with this message today because it was just so overwhelming. But it's something that I'm willing to take time to look into. So then I asked another question. How do I co-create the life I want with the universe? Well, at this point, I think the universe kind of took pity on me. <laughs> you know, I was like, all right, she's not going to give this one up. So the answer came in the form of a good friend. And that good friend shared her belief that we are not on some linear path to a defined point of enlightenment. But rather, we're fractals, expanding and contracting like a breath of air, like a heartbeat. Expanding and contracting. And then she turned me on to a speaker, a physicist. I think he's a physicist. I know he's a scientist called Nassim Harriman. I know he comes to uh, Sedona occasionally. Yeah, you've apparently seen him and heard of him. So I'm looking forward to seeing him next time. He's a scientist who speaks a lot about fractals and their connection to us and the universe. But what did that have to do with my quest to co-create the life I wanted? I still wasn't real clear on that. So, of course, I turned to my authority on everything, Google, and <laughs> so I did some, some uh, research. And um, according to the Fractal Foundation, <laughs> yeah, who knew? <laughs> There's a foundation for it. The fractals are never-ending complex patterns that are created by, simply, by a simple process by, I'm sorry, fractals are never-ending complex patterns that are created by repeating a simple process over and over in an ongoing feedback loop. Now, 
This is really difficult for me to explain, but I'm going to do my best today because it's significant to you as individuals, to the universe, and to CUL as a body. Now, there's many applications and examples of fractals. I just wanted to focus on this one that Nassim spoke of that set off that avalanche of information in my head and how I see it have meaning for all of us. This feed forward and feedback system is the basis for the expansion of the universe. In other words, everything an individual experiences affects God. Everything that God experiences affects us. But you probably already know that one. That was a pretty simple one, wasn't it? But why is that important? Well, because it shows that there's no linear movement to our growth. It's an expansion. It's not a growth. It's not a growth. It's not a growth. It's an expansion of ourselves. So when I was thinking about the description of a fractal, and it talks about a simple process being repeated over and over, it led me to, I don't even know why, it led me to this, to the movie Contact with Jodie Foster. Remember that one? God, I love that show. So, um... It's been a fascination of mine for a long time, that movie. I, there's something just heartwarming about it, something I love, and something eternal about it. And it's not just because of Matthew McConaughey. <laughs> no, really. Okay. But one scene always inspired me and interested me because it was really the defining moment of the movie when Ellie, Dr. Ellie Arroway knew she was defeated in this inquisition they were doing on her. So Dr. Airway, do you know what Occam's razor is? And she says, yes. It's the scientific principle that all things being equal, the simplest answer is usually the right one. So what is the simplest answer to how do we create in a fractal universe? Ha, ah, $64,000 question. First we're told that we're created in the image of God. God was a short redhead? I don't know. <laughs> then as I leaned into the New Age version, the explanation was that we were sent here as individualized expressions of God so that it can experience more of itself. <laughs> well, that's pretty damn one-sided. <laughs> you know, I didn't get that at all. But here's the thing I didn't put back, that I didn't put together back then. God, the universe, isn't it. It's us. It's just us. Uh -oh. oh, thank you. So when we have these experiences and we're feeding back to the universe, I'm getting off script here. Here we go, kids. So when we're, get, when we're feeding this information to the universe, to God, it's experiencing more of what we are and then sending it back to us so that we can experience more of what we are. This is expansion. This is our growth, if you want to put a term to it, another term to it. So how it actually happens is, I had to rewrite this in layman's terms because my brain was totally 6.30 this morning. I'm like, oh boy. <laughs> so the universe takes the information we send it, or the experience that we send it has its own experiences out of this experience, it expands, and then it feeds it right back to us in a symbiotic give and take, expansion and contraction, inhaling and exhaling, causing to us to expand just like it does, us, just like we do. We're having the benefit of each other's experiences and expansion. What that means is that on many levels, we're co-creating not only with each other, but with the entirety of this energy field we call universe or God. So it's not that we need to figure out how to access this energy field because we are this energy field. And what connects us to that oh-so-amazing co-creation energy of, of God? The simple explanation. Occam's razor says love. It all comes back to the simple yet powerful emotion of love. There's no more co-creative, expansive experience in our, in our universe than love. I mean, just think about the first time you fell in love. <gasps> you know, it just feels y'all warm and mushy inside. 
That is an expansive feeling, isn't it? So, even, something else though, that's really important, and I was t I, Stephen touched on it this morning when we were talking, but I want to say this especially to anybody dealing with a vibration of anger, disappointment, frustration, or any other negative emotion. You're not going backwards. From a universal standpoint, you're, not, you're, n you're just not going backwards. You're giving birth to more ideas about what it is you want. That's expansion. So there's no need to beat yourself up or feel less than anything or anyone if you're feeling out of sorts. Go with it. You're right where you need to be at any given time to be expanding and giving feedback to God to co-create what you do want. Now, if you're really feeling stuck on something, we're always here to work with you. But my sense is that we all have lived long enough to understand we have all these answers inside of us. And now you know why. Because we are God, universe, and the individual. There really is no separation. So how do we create with the universe? Again, they're very simple answers. Trust and believe that the universe fully supports what you want and that you are creating and that what you are creating is on its way. You just have to trust and know that. Because if you, <laughs> this is where I get stuck, because if you are co-creating with you, then what's stopping you? If you're co-creating with God, the energy field, the universe, who is you? Why don't you have what you want? I, and me, why don't I have what I want? Maybe it's because the part, the second part to this. Gratitude, gratitude, and more gratitude. You know, sometimes we just don't appreciate what we have. Sometimes we just don't appreciate it. And why should we give ourselves more to not appreciate? So this symbiotic relationship between us and the universe, with us and God, and finally I can tell you all in front of God and everybody, I now have no charge on saying the word God like I did before. It is me. It is you. How can I have a charge against you, Helen? I can't. I love you. <laughs> so... Now, as far as CUL is concerned, just think of this as our own little universal, our energy field, right? All of us are part of it. it get, we, CUL gathers information and experiences, expands, then sends it back to us as individuals. And from that new information, we have new experiences, we expand, and we send it back to CUL. We have to, we have to co-create together. CUL is a co-creation. That's why we need your feedback. We need your energy. We need your volunteerism. And of course, we always need finances. But we need this, we, not, and we, we need this for us. This is what CUL survives on. It's not just about Arvel and I. It never has been about Arvel and I. It's always been about you and about us as individuals. Maybe you've found your co-creative connection with God through religion, art, music, or maybe you're still looking. Maybe you just like coming to a warm, friendly place, huh? Either way, it works here at CUL because every path that I walk with you is simply to co-create co through love this symbiotic feedback so that we can empower each other to become more than we ever thought we could be. With much love and appreciation, I'm Reverend Kimberly Kelly. Thank you. Thank you. Go on. I love you.